All right, I wanted to make a short video on how to do Nessess mods. This is just an introduction that tells you how to get started. Um, so I'll jump right into it. First, you're going to need a copy of the game. Obviously, you can only get it on Steam. And it's right now it's $10, I want to say. Yep, 10 bucks. Okay, so you have that. Next thing that you want to do is... I'll share these links. You're going to want to have both of these links available. You're also going to want to download a copy of IntelliJ IDEA Community Edition. It's free. I'd also recommend downloading a copy of VS Code. You're going to want to download this zip file, which I'll go ahead and do now. This is the uh, example mod that the developer released, so we can use that as a building block. If you're going to do music, I would recommend LMMS. I'll share a link to that. And if you're going to build pixel art, you can either get Libre Sprite. Again, I'll put a link in the description. Or Ace Sprite, which is um, basically the paid version and you know you're supporting the development of the project and that is currently twenty dollars so once you have all those things and you have everything installed which i won't go over the first thing that you're going to need to do is have a directory a lot of people like to have their directory on their desktop I'm just going to create one called Necess Dev and open it up. Hit the Windows key and E will open up another file explorer. We're going to go to our downloads and then just move that example mod that we downloaded over there. So let's go ahead and extract that. We're going to right click extract all. That's usually built in into Windows, but I'm going to use 7-zip to extract it into this folder. Again, that's a technical thing. You can figure that out. First thing that I like to do is to go into this folder and into the build.gradle file. I'm going to right click it and open it in VS Code. And I'm going to edit this first before I even try opening it up in IntelliJ. The reason is um, my game directory is different than the default directory. So I have all my Steam games getting installed on my D drive, so I need to update this. So I'm just going to open up Windows key E, go to my Steam directory, common, assess, grab that directory path, put it in here. Go ahead and update directory here make sure that you have forward slashes because windows likes to give you backslashes all right and then the next thing i do is update the mod id i'm just going to use something generic nicklose.mod mod game the game version which is right now 20.24 so make sure you have that updated uh, and then the author name. The only thing that IntelliJ is really going to complain about is this game directory. And I like to make sure that doesn't happen in advance. So that's the only reason I opened this up really. But I also went ahead and put in this sort of generic stuff. So I'm going to save that and close it. And now I can go ahead and go back to my uh, dev directory. And then I'm going to right click and open this in IntelliJ IDEA. The first thing that it's going to do is start the build task and you can see that's happening right here on the bottom left 
This is also assuming you've already went through this setup uh, stuff for IntelliJ IDEA when you installed it. So here we go. It says build successful. And now the other first thing I'm going to do, I would say it's another prepping thing, is go into my... Um, why does it say cat mod? Did I rename it to cat mod? Am I crazy? What's going on here? No, I didn't. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. Uh, I think it was pulling in some data that was cached on my system, but it fixed itself. So <laughs> the first thing I like to do is go ahead and uh, update this package name to whatever I want it to be, right? Right now it just says example mod. Uh, and Let's say I wanted to rename it to something else. I would go right click, I would go to refactor, rename, and we'll just call it, um, I don't know, new biomes or something like that. Refactor it. So now the package name is called new biomes. We wanna go ahead and update the main uh, class that the mod uses, I'm gonna go again to refactor, rename, and I'll call it new biomes. Use that capitalization uh, scheme when you're uh, renaming your Java classes. Now from here forward, it's basically, you're free to do whatever you want, but I will get into that stuff later, but I'll go ahead and show you how to build and run and test these mods in the game. Um, there's a little tray over here called the Gradle tray. These are tasks that are sort of built into the, this uh, IDE. Uh, so we'll go to the Necess and we'll go ahead and run build mod jar. That's going to build the jar file for the mod. Also notice that all of this example code is still in here. So all of these example mods that were made for this example project will be a part of the game. For example, the, um, I believe it's the, so we have example item that's going to show up in the game when we run it. Uh, we have I think example object is the uh, or something that causes the grass to drop coins, right? Something like that that's built into this example project. So we're going to see that when we launch this example project. Basically, so let's go to the run client. Now you have to have Steam open for this because it needs to launch Necess from Steam. So we're going to run client. And it's going to open it up. And you can see it has found two mods and it's loaded one mod. I'm going to take a peek at this mods directory. This is a separate mod that I have. But this is, uh, you can see it says mod name. That's where I updated it in the Gradle file. And it's check marks, so it's enabled right now. I'm just going to load my world that I already created for mod testing. And that's my mod dev world. Otherwise, I would recommend creating a new world and just naming it for modding or something like that. Hit continue and create the world. That way, it's going to load up with your mod 
already working, right? If I go cut grass, you can see grass drops coins. I think if I go into the cave or even this menu here, there's an example item that you can craft with two iron bars. So all of those things that were created already in that in that code, in the example code, are already in the game, as you can see here. And I think there might even be... Yeah, there's... You can also craft that item in here. And then I think there's a... A mob in the caves that's just like an example mob. Let me grab some uh, torches real quick. And then get some. Right, so I'm going to make some torches. Man, I forgot how slow you move when you first start playing this. And I should run into that example mob that is part of the example file at some point here. And there he is. This is a mob that's not normally in the game, but it's part of that code that we just looked at. Let me just go ahead and build some stuff. And I think one of these things even drops an example drop, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see if I can make myself a little... nope. Anyways, that's the example mob in the game. So you can see that the mod is working fine. I'm just going to go to main menu and exit. And now you can see that it's finished. So all of these things happened after I ran it. And you can go back through and look at everything that happened while you were testing your mod. This is basically the log of everything. Here's the hello world for my example mod. This just runs sort of on the back end. Uh, somebody will correct me if I'm wrong. But here is a system out print line that happens when you initialize the mod. So there it is, um, and you can just look through here. I don't know what this rabbit mob constructor was. I guess that a rabbit a rabbit spawned in the world. Um, this is probably me mining some stuff. Oh yeah, cutting grass, right? Um, an error happened here. I don't know what it was, but. Yeah, so you can see everything that happened while the game was running. I went into the cave and it said now it's playing Music Cave at 100% volume. So yeah, a lot of stuff's happening here, but that's the basics of getting started. I'm not going to go on any further right now, but that is how you start creating mods. In future videos, I'll go over how to... Uh, start writing some code and playing around with these examples to put new things in the game or change things or whatever you want. So that's it for this video and thanks for watching.